Hello and welcome to another Dynamic CCTV technical video. Today we're going to take a look at the Ajax transmitter, which is a handy little device that allows you to integrate third party manufacturers detectors and devices into the Ajax system. As we know, there are a lot of different detector technology out there on the market, different types and ranges of beam for different functions and functionality. This device allows you to integrate those devices with the Ajax system through an al alarm input. So as long as the detector's got a, a volt-free contact on its wired output, then it can be connected up to this device and then in turn integrated with the Ajax system. So the unit runs off three CR123A batteries. It's got an alarm and a tamper connection here. They're actually inputs to be connected from your third party device. It's actually got a power output, so the potential to power your device from the transmitter unit rather than from a separate power source. It's got its usual alarm response time of 0.15 seconds and a range of about 1,600 meters. It will work on the actual Rex extender unit and all of the Ajax hubs that are currently available on the market. It's got an accelerometer built into it, which enables the unit to detect when it's being moved. So that acts like its own inbuilt tamper. That will send alarms through the Ajax hub as well. As you can see, it's not housed, so it's designed pretty much to be incorporated into the device that it's controlling, really. So, obviously, keeps it in close proximity of it and it eases the wiring between the two devices. Uh, we'll be demonstrating this using the GJD Universal Detector later in this video. But as you can see, looking at the back box for that particular product, it will actually sit nicely inside there, the back box, and wire directly through to the detector, which we'll obviously show in action later on in the video. It will actually work through other devices. It doesn't necessarily have to be a detector. Anything that has a wired vault-free contact on its output could potentially be connected to this and integrated to the Ajax systems. There's a lot of different measuring and detection devices out there, whether it be temperature, heat, humidity, a lot of different potential devices that could be incorporated into the Ajax hub using this device. So let's have a look how you add it to the hub and how you set it up to operate. Okay, I've now got the transmitter wired up to one of the GJD Universal detectors. They're a battery operated detector designed to be used with these sort of wireless transmitter devices. They've got the volt free contacts on the bottom there. So they're wired straight into the alarm connections of the transmitter. You can also, if you choose to power the universal detector from the transmitter, but you bear in mind that will run the batteries down a little bit quicker than normal, depending on what setting you've got the transmitter set to. There's also a tamper connection there, which I've just put a little loop through for today. It's easier to demonstrate than using the tamper on the actual detector, like so. The first thing we need to do is the transmit it to our Ajax hub, which we can do by clicking on the ad and obviously giving it a name. And if I now scan the QR code, I'll scan the QR code on the actual box, like so, and choose the room. And we can add that system. So we've got to power cycle the unit, which we can do by just clicking this little button here. There we go. So you can see the transmitter is now added as a device on the bottom of the list there. So if we click on the actual icon, we can see there we've got some of the statistics from the actual transmitter coming through. Some do take a few seconds to come through, such as the lid status and the battery charge, but we've got various other options there already on the screen. So if we click on the settings tab in the top right hand corner, I've got various options here. At the top we can see we've got an external contact mode and also on a tamper status, they're both set to normally closed. You can click on each of them and choose between normally closed and normally open. Obviously we leave that on normally closed. There's an always active setting there which when switched on will mean that the, whatever the transmitter is connected to will always be in alarm mode even when the, the hubs are disabled. We've got delay when entering, delay when leaving, so if your detector's in an exit or entrance route you can put a delay on that so it doesn't set the alarm off immediately. Alert if moved is the accelerometer which is built into the transmitter which again acts as a second tamper to the detector zone so we can turn that on and there's also the external sensor supply so if you were powering the detector off the transmitter you can set different ways of doing that so if we click on that you can see always disabled disabled if hub is disarmed which is a power saving means or power saving setting basically means when the hub's not in active mode then the transmitter will remove power to the detector preserving the battery life and then there's always enabled option as well which is always delivering power to the detector. So we'll leave the alert if moved on. There's also a couple of options there that allow some of your alarm detections to be linked to the siren, the external siren, for both the alarm detection and also the accelerometer as well being triggered there both on as default. So if we come back out of that screen, we can arm the system like so, and this makes our hub ready to receive alarms and react to them from the actual transmitter and the detector as well. So there's three ways that we can do it. One is the tamper, one is the alarm detection, and the third is the accelerometer. So the first one we'll look at is triggering the alarm itself, which we can do by just basically waving my hand in front of the unit, like so. That should trigger. The there we can see that's triggered the actual detector 
and you can see the alarm is detected from the transmitter. The second way of arming the system or triggering the system is to the accelerometer which is a tamper as such so if we can do that just by purely moving the device like so. So if we put the transmitter up and move it round that should trigger the actual unit there to send a moved alarm through so that's the accelerometer triggering the actual system as well. And the third method of triggering it is to actually trigger the tamper so I've got a little link in on my unit here so if I remove the link like so and just pull one of the cable ends out there we are that should trigger the tamper there we go lid is open so that is basically triggering a tamper which would obviously in a real world scenario be connected up to the detector so somebody removing the lid from the detector or removing the detector from the wall would also trigger that particular method as well so if I quickly disarm the system there like so that takes us back to A mode if you like and yeah, just a couple of ways in which this transmitter can be used. It's obviously designed to integrate third-party devices into the AJAX system. As I said earlier, there's a lot of different means in which you can get the alarm AJAX hub to react to third-party equipment, whether it be different alarm detectors with different characteristics or uh, home automation devices or even measurement devices measuring humidity, temperature and various other means. All it needs is a vault-free contact connected up to the transmitter and that will then be integrated with the transmitter and the transmitter then to the hub. And like I said earlier, these devices are designed to be housed inside the actual back box let's just wait for the uh, accelerometer to kick in there because i've moved the actual unit but yeah they're designed to be housed inside the actual back box of your third party device keeps them in close proximity to the unit itself for actually wiring and also houses the device as well and keeps it to, to an ip rating as such so there you are the transmitters are available now from dynamic cctv please contact your account manager for more information if you've got any further technical questions then please don't hesitate to get in touch with dynamic cctv's technical department thanks for watching this video please subscribe to our youtube channel for more useful videos coming soon thanks for watching bye for now